In this video, you're going to learn about the genetic tests that really matter in practice. Earlier, I compared pharmacokinetic genes to drug interactions, and that comparison should have raised some eyebrows for you. I mean, how many times do you get alerts about drug interactions in your electronic medical record, and do you delve into all of them or suffer from alert fatigue? So why should we give these pharmacogenetic alerts any more weight? The answer depends on the medication. It's not just the gene that matters, but the gene-drug interaction. Most psych meds have a wide therapeutic window and a wide margin of safety, so we don't check blood levels or worry too much about drug interactions with them. Many are metabolized by multiple enzymes in the liver, so if one of them slows down, another can take over. Two groups, the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, keep an updated list of drug-gene interactions that matter. To make their list, there has to be clinical evidence that the drug-gene interaction could significantly compromise the medication's safety or efficacy. When it comes to safety, the risk these groups are most concerned about is cardiac. When drugs that prolong the QTC interval reach high levels, it can trigger a potentially fatal arrhythmia called torsades to point. In the United States, the FDA requires genetic testing before going to higher doses of pimazide and recommends testing for the medications theoridazine, citalopram, and the tardive dyskinesia medications dutrabenazine and valbenazine. All of these are for the QTC interaction. The FDA is not requiring a full genetic panel here. They only want you to check the enzyme that metabolizes the drug to avoid high levels and potential arrhythmias. The table on the screen lists psychiatric drugs for which these groups recommend genetic testing before prescribing them. You'll notice that three pharmacokinetic tests cover nearly all of the requirements. Those are CYP2D6, 3A4, and C19. And I agree, these are the most useful of the genetic tests. But there is one more that is very useful and in fact required by the FDA, and it's not a pharmacokinetic gene. It is the HLA typing for carbamazepine. Keep this list of actional drug gene interactions in mind. Say, if a patient calls with unusually severe side effects on one of these medications. If the drug is on this list, they might be a poor metabolizer and genetic testing is warranted. Let's look at how that plays out with the ADHD medication Atomoxetine Stratera. Atomoxetine causes sedation in about 1 in 20 patients, but for those 1 in 20, the problem can be quite severe. So severe that atomoxetine ranks near the top of medications with an antidepressant structure that triggered reports of sedation to the FDA's surveillance system based on a study that classified atomoxetine as an antidepressant, which it was originally designed as. How did a rare side effect make it to the top of that list? Well, atomoxetine levels peak tenfold higher in people who are poor CYP2D6 metabolizers. So with this medication, when it rains, it pours. Let's pause to recap some of the key points. Just as with most drug-drug interactions, most gene-drug interactions do not make a meaningful difference in practice. Several groups have compiled the gene-drug interactions that you need to be cautious about. The list includes antipsychotics, tricyclic antidepressants, citalopram, tardive dyskinesia medications, and atomoxetine. Now let's look at the outlier on that list, a gene for a drug allergy with carbamazepine. One of these genes is not like the others. It's the HLA-B1502 gene and it predicts whether patients of Asian descent will have a serious rash on carbamazepine and possibly on oxcarbazepine. Patients who are positive for the HLB-1502 are 80 times more likely to develop Stevens-Johnson syndrome on carbamazepine. 
and they're 30 times more likely to develop it on oxcarbazepine. But what about lamotrigine, which can also cause Stevens-Johnson syndrome? Here, the risk is much smaller. They're only twice as likely to develop that rash with lamotrigine. So it's not recommended for testing on lamotrigine, as it doesn't change the odds very much. And because this gene is prevalent in Asian populations, the FDA requires it before prescribing carbamazepine to a patient of Asian descent. And you cannot prescribe it if the result is positive. It's just too risky. For oxcarbazepine, the testing is recommended by some medical groups, but not by the FDA. Again, and it's only recommended in Asian populations. For lamotrigine, no guidelines recommend the test because a positive result is not going to change your prescribing. Although it doubles the risk of Stevens-Johnson syndrome, that's still within the margin of error for the estimated risk, which runs from 1 in 3,000 to 1 in 6,000. But what does Asian descent really mean? People with the highest rates of this HLA gene are from Hong Kong, Thailand, Malaysia, China, Taiwan, and the Philippines. That's where 10 to 15% of the population has this HLA gene. Rates are lower in South Asia, India, and North China, where they are 2 to 4%, and they're lower still in Japan and Korea, where they're less than 1%. When it comes to recommended and required genes, there's another one to know about that predicts liver failure on valproic acid, but this gene, called polymerase gamma, or POLG, is only present in patients with hereditary neurometabolic syndromes like alpers hunnenlocker syndrome. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration requires testing for POLG before prescribing valproic acid in those patients. Let's recap the key points of this talk. Among the genes that have a clinically meaningful effect on treatment, only one is a pharmacodynamic gene, HLA-B1502. This gene predicts a life-threatening allergic reaction to carbamazepine called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Testing for this gene is required before prescribing carbamazepine in patients of Asian descent because that is the population where the gene is prevalent.